Imagine you and your friends want to make a road trip to Goa. <laughs> so you're all very excited about it. You start planning your trip, and now you have to figure out who's going to be driving, who's going to be taking turns to drive, where you're going to fill gas, where you're going to stop for food. When you get to Goa, which restaurants are you going to eat at? Where are you going to go out at night? Now, what if all of you could be sitting in a car, hanging out, chit-chatting, listening to good music, reading a good book, probably even putting nail polish on your toes if you want to, all the while the car is driving itself. Now, when you get to Goa, you get a message on your phone and it says, hey, I know you and your friends like Italian food, so I've made a reservation for you at 8.30 p.m. And I've also put you on the guest list on the bar next door. Have a good trip. Voila, all planning done. This is not a far off possibility. There are hundreds of companies across the globe working on projects to make this a reality very soon. The driverless cars that have traveled 480,000 kilometers without a single crash. That is five trips back and forth from Mumbai and Goa without a single crash. This is the power of artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, or AI in short, is a concept where machines can perform tasks which will normally require human intelligence. So the machine will follow some patterns, follow some instructions, make some decisions, and complete a task for you. So let's say you want to find the closest ATM to you. What you're going to do is you're going to find all the ATMs nearby. You're going to calculate the distance between you and each of the ATMs and get your answer. But a machine can probably do this for you, probably better than faster than any other human being, using artificial intelligence. Now, when you think about it, behind the scenes, there's actually a human sitting there coding these machines, instructing it how to follow these instructions. So the machines can only be as smart as the human coding it. So this is good, but I like to think about this as automation, where we tell machines to do tasks that we're too lazy to do. In 1951, a man called Arthur Samuels wanted to build a computer program that could beat him at checkers. He was stuck with a problem where he did not know how to teach the computer because the computer would only know as much as he did. So what he did instead was he let the computer play checkers against itself thousands of times and let it learn new moves and new patterns. And it worked. The machine actually beat humans on checkers. This is what we call machine learning. Machine learning is actually a branch of AI which learns things on its own without anyone telling it what to do. Artificial intelligence and machine learning is where the future is going. Now, artificial intelligence has actually been around for a while. We could trace the actual first proposal of artificial intelligence back to 1950 to a man called Alan Turing. He proposed the Turing test. It still holds true and we still use it as a litmus test today. What he said was if a machine can have a conversation which is hard to distinguish from a conversation with a human being, it's reasonable to say that the machine is thinking. Now, for the longest time, machine learning, artificial intelligence was only a subject in the labs. The professors, research centers would be working on machines to make it learn. But off late, artificial intelligence has become a part of our daily lives. Each one of us is being affected by artificial intelligence in some way, shape, or form. And sometimes we don't even realize it. The best example of this is Google. When you go on Google and you search for something, the option that you're shown is actually a result of a machine finding out what's the best for you. When you go on Amazon, Flipkart, the products that you see are actually decisions made by machines by, because they know so much about you and they know what you might be inclined to buy. Amazon, Flipkart, Google, Zomato, Ola, Uber, Swiggy, 
and a lot of other products that we use today are powered by AI. And they are, on a daily basis, influencing how we behave and how we make decisions. Now, all this you probably already knew. But did you know, when you're on an airplane, 15% of the time, the flight is actually on autopilot. These are machines making thousands of decisions per second to figure out what's the right path to your destination. Even the food that we eat at home is actually influenced by AI at some point. Farmers in India are using artificial intelligence to increase their crop yield. Businesses all across the globe are using artificial intelligence to save them a lot of money. There was actually a survey done of CEOs and CTOs across the globe, where three out of the four CEOs said that we are planning to use artificial intelligence at large or very large scales to help them save money in their businesses. Manufacturing, healthcare, construction, transportation, supply chain management, and many other industries are using AI to become, make themselves more efficient. We at Haptic work with a lot of big companies helping them automate their customer support services, service centers. The way we do it is we use chatbots. Chatbots are machines that are designed to hold conversations with a human that can help them perform a task or help them solve problems. Just in the chatbot industry, we're expected to save 8 billion US dollars in the next three years. That's 51,000 crore rupees in the next three years saved. So there's no doubt that, that companies are going to use artificial intelligence. And a lot of the work that we do today is actually going to be done by machines. So as we live in this world, which we've only seen in science fiction movies so far, one of the biggest concerns we all have is what about our jobs? Will machines take over our jobs? <coughs> now, if you look back at the examples I've spoken so far, one common theme that comes around in most of them is that every single point the machine is working, there's actually time when the human has to take control. So in the autopilot example, there's a pilot sitting in the cockpit that takes control of the flight. In customer service where we work, we actually transfer queries to the humans. Now, there's actually a really good example that happens here. So pathologists, when they are trying to identify breast cancer cells, they can do it accurately 96% of the time without the help of any machines. When the machines are doing it themselves, they can do it accurately 92% of the time. But with humans and machines working together, you can almost identify it 100% of the time accurately. Now that's a thing of beauty. Every single cell identified correctly, every single percent increase in this number can save hundreds of lives. So while we live in this world where machines and humans live together, what we need to think is about how, what skills we need to acquire to stay ahead of the curve. There's an example of where back in 50, 60 years ago, NASA, the US space program did have computers. So what they did is they found a group of really smart women who were really good at math. There's actually a movie made of all this. Right about then, IBM came up with computers and they were, had the promise that these computers can do calculations faster than any human beings. So these women were soon going to lose jobs. Now, one of these women, Dorothy Manghorn, realize that these computers need to be programmed for them to work properly. So what she did is she started learning coding. And she taught how the code needs how to learn to code. When the computers were installed, as expected, they needed people to program it. And these women, from being human calculators, became coders. So they adapted and they figured out what skills they need to stay ahead in the future. In a similar manner, I do believe there will be a lot more opportunities and skills that we need to kind of adapt. I think there will be human interaction designers, people who will be figuring out how machines and humans work together. There will be content providers which provide data on how machines can learn better and faster. There will also be human psychologists who will be figuring out how humans behave, how machines behave, and how they can think alike and work together. 
I like to think that history is our best teacher. So let's go back to the 17th century when we were all farmers, warriors, and blacksmiths. Back then, the Industrial Revolution came about, and we had these big industries building big machines that would displace a lot of workers. Now, a tractor at the farm could do the work of almost 20 to 30 different farmers. But the world that we live in today is a lot more progress. The buildings, the cars, the roads, the flights that we have has helped us live a better future. We're more productive today, and if you go to look at it, we have hundreds of more new jobs today than we had back then. So in a similar manner, I do think we're going to create a lot more new opportunities with AI. AI might make some jobs obsolete, it might make take do some work better than us humans, but it will also create a lot of new opportunities. At Haptic, we have two job positions, which I could have never imagined would be roles five years ago when I started Haptic. We have a position called AI Trainer. These are people training and building the bots. And we have a position called Bot QA, and these are people who supervise and help train them and make sure the quality of the bots are. So there are new positions already opening. Now, while we think about these new positions and the new skills of the future, the future that we're going to be living in is going to be heavily dependent on our models and ethics. Let me tell you what I mean by this. The companies today that are using machines for their hiring process. Machines help you find candidates, people with the right skills, people who are very productive, people who can fit your culture really well. Now, let's say the person sitting behind and coding this machine is having a bad day because he just broke up with his girlfriend. So he decides, I don't want this algorithm to hire any women. Now suddenly, the job market for women has become really bad because one person made an immoral decision. And this is just one example. There could be hundreds of other examples and some of them also life-threatening. So we do have to put checks and controls in place as we move forward. Just like today how we have regulations around gun controls, I do think there will be regulations that will make the misuse of AI harder. But, the models, the ethics, and the foundations that we hold are going to determine the world that we live in tomorrow. So, all in all, AI is here to stay. It's already changing the world as we speak. And each one of us needs to start thinking what we need to do to adapt to the future. We human beings have been around for generations and centuries. We've gone through multiple of these revolutions. And we've made the world a better place and we've come out strong. I do believe the world that we're going to be living in tomorrow is going to be better, is going to be a lot more exciting, and we will come out stronger because we are one of the smartest living beings on this planet. So, to end this talk, I'm going to quote one of my favorite authors, Isaac Asimov, who said, In a perfectly automated and educated world, machines might be the true, might prove to be the true humanizing influence. Machines will do the work that makes life possible. And human beings will do the work that makes life pleasant and worthwhile. Thank you guys. I'm the secret.